Hello there everyone, my name is Timothy Kornowski with KornowskiOriginals.com with this uh, free art lesson on how to paint with oils. Now we're not going to get really far with it because that would be many, many art lessons. And you're welcome to sign up and schedule for art lessons with me on Zoom. And uh, I'd be happy to show you all the details and everything I know about painting. I've been painting since I was about 12 or 13, so it's about 25 years now. So got a little experience I could share with you. Today I'm just going to kind of go over some of the supplies, materials, things you need. Right now I just got an 8x10. Um, this is a canvas board, you know. Sometimes that's the best way to go with, especially with smaller stuff, because if you're kind of learning as you go, um, basically, you know, it's not going to get overly expensive to uh, paint because canvas board is really easy to work with. Um, another little tip for some of you artists out there, say you want, to, you want to do something a little smaller, you can cut this in half, get two different pieces, just make sure you don't hurt yourself. Um, put a straight edge on there and just cut that right in half. Or you could even take a 16 by 20 inch, I've done this many times, I think you can get uh, four of these out of that. So, and 8 by 10s are really easy to frame, don't bother, you know, paying a couple hundred dollars to have it framed at a store when you can just... Uh, Go to Target and grab something for 10 or 15 bucks. Just pop the glass and mat out and you got a really pretty frame for your picture. And let's see, I think what we'll start with is I'll talk about some of the brushes I use. Um, you can use big old brushes like this, you know. Now granted, a lot of the brushes I'm showing you right now, they're not in mint condition anymore. So you're not going to buy it looking like this, obviously. It's going to look like a perfectly uh, cornered rectangle. I use a lot of filberts. This is my main painting in blind air brush. And you can see how I'm holding it. That's how I paint. I don't paint like this very much at all unless I'm signing my name. You paint like this. I was taught by my art teacher, Mr. John Gordon, because then you can paint with both sides of the brush. You can roll the paint off. Also, this is a sable. I believe it's a horsehair brush. A lot of my supplies are by Windsor & Newton. You can buy Utrecht and even more expensive than that, I'm sure. I would just go with medium grade. I don't have a problem with a lot of the uh, art supplies that I get at that level, so don't overspend. Uh, it's just like I tell people with Prismacolor, don't buy a 150 piece set because they're made to mix together. So anyways, you can get brushes anywhere in between. I carry, you know, an old vase with a bunch of old brushes in it and it really gets the job done for me. And the first thing we want to do is get our palette ready. Because of lack of time and just, you know, it would take many art lessons to share, I'm just going to go over with you some of the, the uh, different colors I use. And uh, here's titanium white. Use a lot of this. I use a couple different reds, Alizar and Crimson, and a cadmium red light. Be careful with the cadmium red right here. It's got cadmium in it. And then I use a couple different yellows. This cadmium yellow I believe and yellow ochre yellow ochre was like Vincent van Gogh's best friend this guy right here uh, again you could see I've got different brands um, sometimes that creates a problem uh, I haven't noticed any myself this is one of my favorites French ultramarine blue and I also use a, a cerulean blue now I'm not, I don't have it in my palette right now but the best blue to get for atmospheric blues is cobalt blue. Remember that, cobalt blue if you're taking notes. Greens, I use sap green. This is very weak though. The pigmentation, you gotta use half a bottle sometimes to get it. And the Viridian Hue is really nice. And I also use a few different oranges. And this is like a dark orange to me, burnt umber. And also cadmium orange. And I also use a cobalt violet hue. You can also use cobalt violet, pay a little more for it. And Venetian red, which I don't even think they make anymore, but uh, you can also use burnt sienna. This is my Venetian red I like to use for underpainting. So if I was gonna do a self portrait, I'm gonna paint a red kind of undertone underneath because that'll always come through in your finished painting. If you're gonna use, let's say, a light blue, you might end up looking like a corpse and you don't want that. So, we also use what we call a medium, and for a long time I used a Gamsol mixture with um, refined linseed oil or stand oil, and uh, I noticed I started getting headaches and in my 30s. 
So I recommend, you know, unless you've got really good venting, um, my studio right now, I'd have to modify it a little bit, but uh, haven't gotten around to it. So I've been using walnut oil and uh, believe it or not, it takes a little longer to dry, but this stuff is awesome. Totally non-toxic. I just like working with non-toxic stuff anyways, which you say, that's kind of funny, Tim, because you're working with cadmium paint. Well, do the best you can with what you got. Also, I use Gamsol only for cleaning. I know it looks like a dirty science experiment, but this is a silicoil jar. You'll see they'll sell it in like Hobby Lobbies a lot of times. And then I just pour Gamsol in there. I wouldn't use low odor mineral spirits or anything. I just use Gamsol. It's a little more expensive, but it's the best option in terms of least toxicity and least chance for headaches. So that's what I use just for cleaning my brushes. And literally the coil flexes in the jar. So when you push the brush against it, it spreads the, the uh, brush apart to get the pigmentation out better. And that saved me 15, 20, 25 minutes uh, every time cleaning brushes, because I used to sit and just brush it up against the edge of a jar when I was a younger guy. So um, basically, we'll just go over a little bit for about 10 minutes or so. Um, you wanna get, when you're starting out your, uh, your canvas, you're not gonna wanna be going in like this. You're gonna wanna take your brush, you know, get it drenched with paint and just cover it. So I've got, yeah, you, know, you can use all kinds of like, just homemade stuff. This is a little container that's got walnut oil in it, but you can do that. If you don't like walnut oil, just use a mixture of stand oil and Gamsol. Just make sure you have good ventilation. So right here, I am spreading it across the palette. I just cleaned this palette. It was pretty dirty not too long ago. And what you're doing is you're just gonna get it across, straight across the board. And I think we'll have time just enough for, you know, we'll cover it and then we'll do a little bit of sketching and you can take it from there. I've got a lot of examples of paintings I've done, landscapes, sceneries. This is the exact easel that I like to use outdoors too. I think it's my third Line Air easel. They run anywhere from, I wanna say 150 to like $250 and they just fold up like a box. And I think they were invented in the late 1800s, so they've been around for a long time. My art teacher used to actually design his own, which is pretty cool. It was fairly bulky and heavy, but then again, he wasn't walking miles with it. And plus, that extra bulk you'll find, make sure if you're out there painting, you gotta have that thing weighted down, because the second it gets windy out there, it will take your easel and throw it. I've had it happen before. I was next to the bay in Surgeon Bay and my umbrella caught because you need to have an umbrella to block the sunlight. You don't want direct sunlight on your picture because it won't turn out right. So I had my umbrella on and it acted like a wind sail. I'm sitting there talking to somebody about art or whatever. And lo and behold, a big gust of wind took the whole thing, slammed it on the ground, almost destroyed it and then my medium just rolled into the bay. So that day I learned how to paint impasto uh, when I was painting outdoors. Blessing in disguise, I guess you could say. So that's just a quick covering. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be kind of even and consistent. You can see I'm painting, you know, just like that. That's actually how I do it. It's not an exaggeration or anything. So I'm gonna put this to the side. Some artists actually will exercise themselves painting with a big fat brush like that. In a, in a certain application, you can do that. This little picture I have uh, off the side, I'm just gonna go ahead and give you an idea as I work. So I always like to have a paper towel next to me. You're gonna, that's like your best friend when you're outside, outside painting in flying air. And I'm just gonna grab some oil paint here and again just load it up both sides and when you hold it like this you can roll that brush I'm gonna bring the light in a little bit closer okay here we go so this landscape you know it's very simple it's just a, a little sketch another artist did but I'm just gonna use it as an example 
of what we can do when we're just doing something simple. It doesn't take a whole lot. It doesn't take a lot of words to say something sometimes. Let's just say there's a little crick running through here. Some tall brush. This is based off a Roman Kochanowski painting. And I actually borrowed his autograph and made Kornowski based off of that. I've never really told anyone that, but kind of in his honor I did that. He passed away years ago, of course I never met him. But uh, his art is very much like a Polish style, like very country. And you know, when the Poles came out to Green Bay area years back, they had a lot in common with their weather. There's, uh, there's some water out here. All right, here we go. Maybe there's some clouds up in the sky. Now you never want to put a lot of detail in your clouds. Just keep them really wispy. Unless you got thunderstorms and you got very great strong edges in your clouds and things. And just kind of lay it in there. Not real thick, but thick enough. It's just, a, we're just doing like an oil sketch. Sepia tones, if you will. Nothing real major. And in fact, this is probably, you know, I would continue building on it off camera, continue working on it. As some of the best pictures, they turn out just in moments because, you know, it took still a lifetime to do that painting even if it only took, what, an hour to actually pull out the idea. Sometimes I'll do a big underpainting and let it dry, and then I'll come back because if I don't let that dry, my colors I throw in there aren't gonna mix well. They're gonna be mixing with the underpainting. Now, I'm still experimenting with the walnut oil because it takes a long time for walnut oil to dry. If I didn't want to use walnut oil, I could use liquid which is really potent and really toxic, so you better make sure you have really good vent ventilation with that. So that's, that's kind of the way I would lay on my paint, as you can see. You know, you don't want to lay your paint on necessarily right away with big gobs. See that? You don't want big gobs on there. Uh, you also don't want it so thin that you're not laying and applying enough paint on there. So it's a really you just kind of learn as you go. You don't get it overnight. Uh, it takes a lot of work to learn how to just apply the paint because you have a go-between here. And it's an extension of your hand. And how do I apply that? And then, oh, I've got wet paint on there. It's gonna start mixing with what I apply to the canvas. So you gotta learn how to kind of roll with it, roll with the punches. It's not gonna be perfect. Don't try to go for perfection. Uh, when you're painting, that will, that will just not work for you. You don't really try to make a masterpiece. They, they come when they wish, I guess you could say. Okay, I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit of white. Eh, maybe a little bit more. You kind of figure out how much paint to squeeze out after a while, depending what you're doing. So let's just say we want to set this to the side. Pull out another filbert. Now oh, let's see. See this one again? Pretty much the same thing. I think it's a number five flat, but I believe it's called a filbert and Windsor and Newton, but everything's rubbed off over time because, you know, sweat gets on the brush and just eats the, eats the paint right off sometimes. Uh, let's see. So we use grabbing some white here, a little bit off camera. I'll try to bring it back in. And there's like a little moon coming up. Kind of like so and you know then we have let's just say we have a full moon night so so it's kind of glistening off of things as you can see it's taken a while to get to the point where you know how much paint you can put on that brush and how little you can put on the brush you know let's just say we wanted to add a little bit of highlights here now if I want, I can let this sit and then add some color later. Now the original was just literally a black and white, so there wasn't a whole lot to it. But you know, I think a sepia tone picture could literally stand on its own if you ask me. I've done a lot of the shows 
where you go out and you paint for literally two hours and then the horn goes off you know when you're done and uh, you got to make sure you've completed your picture it's pretty wild that's pushing yourself to another level because it's literally a, a deadline in time and like they say you can't rush good art but sometimes you you have to just go for it see what you can get done in a couple hours now if you're not there don't push yourself for it when I first started painting in plein air or painting outdoors uh, that was that was a really big daunting task and I had about two two weeks where I felt pretty depressed about my my results so I had to go back to the same exact spot and do it again and it turned out a lot better so as you can see how I'm applying the paint I'm sorry we can't get into mixing of color and all that, that that's going to be definitely some more time spent but you can literally like let's say you want to mix your colors if you look at your color wheel your blue and your yellow they're going to make a green you know you're going to cancel colors out by at it, uh, taking your blue and orange together if you want to neutralize something so you can use the color wheel to your advantage that way or let's just say you wanted yellow and red together well it's going to create an orange so always keep in mind your color wheel have it sitting right next to you you don't need to memorize it all you'll just pick it up just like you learn how to read or so, like you learn how to ride a bike sometimes it takes a little longer than usual it took me till i was almost 30 to learn how to swim it was just one of those things in my family that uh, people struggled with for whatever reason and uh, i wanted to overcome that for myself I only took about two or three swim teachers but then I was blessed to be able to teach my, my own daughter how to swim, so that was wonderful. She can, she can uh, not have to deal with what I dealt with. So it's like that with art, you know, there's a lot of people that just give up. Yeah, but they're loaded with natural talent, but they quit because they didn't look like Rembrandt overnight. Well, sorry to say, nobody will be just like Rembrandt anyways, and it's gonna take some time to get there, even if that is your particular style. So this is kind of where we want to go with the demo is just keep it, you know, like a sketch. This is just a simple, you know, sepia toned sketch. When you're out in nature a lot, you tend to, you almost be able to invent, you know, where that, the white of the moon is going to reflect off of, you know, how it shines through the tree a little bit, you know, just from being out, you know, just take a lot of walks in nature. If you could also, you can also do, you know, painting um, of portraiture from from photographs, portraits of pets. I've done a lot of those. It's a lot of fun, and you know, there's really no limit to what you can paint. Maybe you want to do abstract. I'm not uh, really big on it myself. I I respect it fully, but I've just never been inclined toward it. But I would be even open to. To helping somebody in that direction learn how to paint something that uh, maybe they just see in their head it's not necessarily representational it doesn't have to be I respect all forms of art basically and yeah this is this is kind of the idea what I wanted here kind of demonstrate you know what you can do with a with a brush I'm not even using a very small brush right now as you can see it's using the paint that's on the brush to its utmost and sometimes it's overloaded so just you know wipe some of it off and let's just say from here I let this dry you know I can I can obviously add some greens and remember when you go back into the background you're always going to add more of the light blue to it gets here it's called aerial perspective and so there's a lot that kind of goes into it if you're working from life, you don't really have to think about that too much because you're just going to copy what you see. So we can work from uh, photographs, which, you know, 150 years ago, we didn't have that, where we had black and white. Well, now we have awesome photography, even from iPhones and Androids. Uh, you can work from the comfort of your own studio on a portrait for somebody. I mean, the sky's the limit, right? But sometimes you need a teacher to point you in the right direction. Maybe you keep that teacher all your life. Maybe you keep the teacher for a few years, you know, or, or maybe you just want to learn a couple things and just run with it. 
perfectly fine. You know, it's, it's how far you want to go. I recommend having a relationship with other artists in general, or even having a, a teacher you can bounce ideas off of, help you keep on the straight and narrow, so to speak. I'm just going to throw a little more white into the sky and probably call her a day on this sketch. Appreciate you all watching this video on how to paint with oils. This is pretty thin. This isn't where we get into the point of painting with impasto paint where it's very thick and it's not where we started out with very thin glazes like in the Mona Lisa for example. This is where the technique that I use when I go out and paint outdoors or when I'm working in the studio on a portrait for somebody. This is kind of the, the way that I'll begin. I'll always start no matter what. Everything seems to have life in it um, so you'll go with like a warm color. And the color right here is actually like a clayish type of pick, uh, color. It's probably made from clay, actually. So I uh, hope I went over some of the colors well with you. Uh, some of the brushes I use, some of the medium. Of course, there's always more to talk about. But uh, uh, the French easel that I use a lot that you can see right here. Actually, my brother picked this up for $25. I don't know how he did. He's got an eye for stuff at thrift stores, but it was just mint condition. And it's been working great ever since. So just, you know, be resourceful, come up with your own ideas. You don't always have to just go to the store and spend a thousand dollars. And uh, be sure to uh, contact me and we'll get you set up on Zoom art lessons and you can work personally with me and interact with me. I have the, we'll have the camera on your art. So, um, and if you feel a little bashful about that, I can obviously work and demonstrate with you. So I'm not constantly staring at your art. So anyways, uh, good to have a support team when you're starting out with art or you wanna, you wanna get into something that can be a little daunting. So look us up at KornowskiOriginals.com. Thanks for watching this free art lesson on painting with oils and uh, the techniques and some of the materials we use. And I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you very much.